And now it's uh, my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, the first keynote speaker, who is the uh, uh, Chinese uh, composer, performer, professor, artistic director, musical activist uh, based in New York, uh, Du Yun. You're about to see a pre-recorded uh, keynote speech, and afterwards, uh, Du Yun will be with us uh, live. Um, for a Q and A, uh, and thanks a lot to Dion in New York for staying up all night to uh, to be with us here in this uh, early start of the New York day. Um, Dion has been artistic director of the Marta Festival in New York. She also initiated the Pan Asia Sounding Festival, and as a composer and performer, um, she has stated that uh, her work uh, starts from what is a lack of understanding and empathy around immigration. Her uh, Key, some key works over the last years has been the uh, opera Angel's Bone around focusing on uh, human trafficking, which in 2017 won the Pulitzer Prize. She made the big work uh, where we lost our shadows in 2019 uh, with the filmmaker Khaled Jara and the soloist uh, Pakistani raga singer Ali Seti, following uh, a family of refugees uh, up through Europe in film and music. In uh, March this year, she just got round to premiering the big uh, collaborative project Sweetland in Los Angeles, uh, an outdoor uh, project, um, which uh, was a grotesque uh, historical pageant and a project that disrupted the dominant narrative of American identity. The project itself was unfortunately also disrupted, uh, had to close down due to the um, pandemic, but it can be seen also now uh, online. Uh, the Carnegie Foundation has labeled her one of 38 great American uh, immigrants. And uh, today, we're very happy to now uh, follow uh, Du Yun's keynote speech, uh, multifaceted, uh, sorry, multifaceted curating. Thank you very much. The floor is Du Yun's. When we are talking about culture, uh, I always think about what, whose culture are we talking about? And uh, whose what part of the history are we really thinking that is the part of the history we're talking about? And I want our audience to experience, not to say, okay, that happened to them, not me. The year was, and it is 2020, the year of the existential crisis. Many of us have been brewing doubts about who we are and where we belong. Culture becomes a privilege, a mirror of values, a nexus of self and a socio-economic realization. In this time of rampant nationalism and cancel culture, current social structures highlight that divides between us all. A global pandemic, to many of us, only heighten these walls. Today, we need to rethink our gateways, our entry points to the world. Throughout this dialogue, I want to share with you more highlights from recent conversations. Each of these artists engage with the multiplicities of who they are in ways that are poignant. They lead by example in their respective communities, and their creative efforts are vital steps towards a more sustainable process. Complex question, you know, as, as, as I'm now familiar with, with your standpoint and the same kind of ethos, I believe, that we share with, with this idea of tradition um, and, and also how it's reflected um, with the Eurocentric audiences um, or this term world or global music or whatever it may be and, and how we get put into that. Um, it's, 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 I don't, I, you know, it, it's, it's touch and go for me, you know. Uh, there's there's lots of things I love about the idea of tradition. There's lots of things that that I really just struggle with. 
Um, and I think that's, that's a product of, of being a child of immigrants and, and born and raised in America, um, losing some of the language, you know, in that process of not being fluent in Hindi or Punjabi, but, um, but then finding music as my source of, of this universal language that connects back to my people. Um, right. It connects to really anyone and everyone, you know. And uh, your parents are uh, from the Jainism, right? You talked about Tibet. Yeah, we also have that, that aspect as well. You know, aside from the immigrant thing, there were also yeah. Jains and we're Punjabi Jains, which is, it's very much an anomaly. Um, yes. with you, even when I, when I meet, uh, South Asian folks here and I say, I'm Jane, they, they presume that I'm from Gujarat or Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. Maybe some portion of the people think I'm mm -hmm. from South India. Uh, but there was a small enclave of Jains that, that migrated, uh, to Punjab in like 13th century after some invasions. I mean, this is, this is information I found just cobbling together different resources and talking to my father about understanding our real our original Gotra, which is our, our original last name um, and where we come from. But, you know, Jains, a lot of Jains migrated to Punjab and Western Punjab, specifically in Sialkot, which then was separated from partition independence of the subcontinent. And over kind of religious lines, a lot of Western folks went East and Eastern went West. Uh, and so my parents were part of that as well. But so, yeah, that definitely plays into the idea of, of traditions. I mean, Growing up, you get inside uh, of, of, of what the motifs are, or what the motives are, and the intention is. Uh, when you're dealing with, with folks really outside of South Asia, uh, you're largely kind of having to generalize things, you know? Um, and yeah, I think that's where it goes back and forth with this idea of, of the noun and the verb and, and how we're utilizing this, you know? And I guess I say that just from the aspect of seeing how the history of jazz has evolved, you know, uh, something that's very, very young, really, uh, in, in its art form, but how much it's developed and how much it's become a vocabulary and, uh, and a mainstay within in American music, you know, it's, it's really one of the very few American art forms, you know, that, 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 that this country can claim. Um, and and there's, there's a lot of dissection and vocabulary and involvement and history with that that you can delve into. So I, I would imagine on, on the realm of, you know, talking about, you know, it, and I use South Asian, I, I primarily like using South Asian uh, because it eradicates, or Hindustan, you know, because it eradicates the idea of colonialism and, and what it did to Pakistan, what it did to India, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, while I respect and understand that those are separate countries, um, for my, my lineage, you know, my parents, come from India, they come from Pakistan, they, they are Jains, they, they're Punjabi, they're everything. So for me in this, in this culture of America, when I say South Asia, to me it kind of represents all, uh, all the people that come from them, that subcontinent, you know, from, from the folks I meet here in this country uh, versus having more separation, you know, and, but, but still acknowledging and, and, and you know, with, with there being more representation um, from all corners of the globe uh, and people being able to, to delve into the nuances and being able to, to talk about it to audiences and talk about it to anyone that's listening. Um, I think people are gonna gain more knowledge. People are gonna gain more vocabulary and ability to, to wrap their head around what it is, you know? Um, I, can, I can certainly say that's true with Jainism. You know, just growing up, uh, no one knew what that religion was, you know, until maybe I was 18, until I went to college. It's not, yeah, it's never a static thing, you know, and, and I think that relates to the idea of, 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 of what you just said again, you know, the idea of tradition and, and building that vocabulary, like nothing is ever static. I think, I think. I admire Sonny's fearlessness. He is also fortunate. He has access to knowledge and therefore choice. In order to be fearless, you have to first know and have access to traditions being taught. Traditions cannot be on an altar, like it's been lost. You cannot tell someone they're a child of that land and not giving them access to knowledge of it. If they could easily travel outside, they would. But sometimes they cannot. We need to redistribute the wealth of resources of knowledge. With this, we create choices of who gets to reinvent for themselves and has the power to say so. 
often knowledge is not publicly available. We must examine how knowledges are sourced and are categorized. Only then can we widen the scope of who gets to create what. In risking our sense of self, we must also reevaluate what it means to succeed. So much funding goes to fetishizing world premieres. What does that even mean? What's the lifespan of this work? Can we reimagine world premieres as the start of new conversations to be had? Remembering art is something that keeps building, not a finished relic. Unlike culture, a world premiere is not mutable. Stop competing with numbers of world premieres. Stop competing with numbers of regions you claim to represent. Stop comparing where you excel in relation to someone else's. This is not a project of now. We will not see immediate change, but with time, patience, and care, however, our future generations might see the heart of I our labors. I've been following this initiative, and you've been doing this for quite a number of years, right?、Um, forty years. Forty years.、Uh, it started first、uh, forty years ago.、Uh, we call it Khmer Study Institute. Uh, and uh, after some years or so, it was dissolved.、Uh, and、uh, later on, I returned back to uh, uh, to, to start the new initiative、uh, with my、uh, wife Susan.、Uh, so、uh, it is called Nemeta Composers Institute. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And this is in uh, Siem, uh, Siem Reap. Uh, no, no, it it is wherever. <laughs> wherever, especially nowadays, include um, uh, one um, uh, contemporary dance by a、um, uh, by a young man.、Uh, he's、uh, emerging choreographer and also、uh, dancer. Uh, he has he has been observing the the workshop、uh, the past few days, and then another another dance piece、um, is、uh, for a young lady, um, uh, uh, the choreograph、uh, the choreographer.、Uh, I assume that's her teacher, uh, 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 her teacher uh, Sam Satya, and、um, uh, this this. That belongs to the first workshop、um, that has something to do with, I call it, new traditional music composition. And so, so、uh, if, if you imagine the the, the center uh, 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 when when the the pebble, the classic pebble, being launched、uh, on the lake, and so that that is. Uh, that is the 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 core of the whatever remaining of the tradition,、uh, and, and in this case, is music. And so the、uh, the first workshop really designed to not、uh, this is what I explained to the student is it just just like after you get married and uh, uh, you prefer to stay maybe just ten kilometers of ten ten <laughs> kilometers from your village. You don't want to go like one thousand kilometers no, over,、no. and, and、uh, it's their choices. They have leverage. Right. Right. You know, they have leverage. But here I call it.、Um, Uh, global contemporary music composition. It's a workshop too, uh, and uh, 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 this one, unlike the first one,、um, it it's more、um, it it it、uh, it center uh, of of、uh, it center on the folk culture. So the musician, a folk、uh, musician,、uh, and that one is really really interesting. <laughs> We see the music, the feel of music composition as a missing link. Uh, uh, if, if we uh, compare uh, to other fields in the performing arts, for example, theater,、uh, even cinema, circus,、uh, dance,、uh, dance drama, and all that,、uh, they have been flourishing,、yes. uh, 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 creating new art forms. And、uh, the, the music, uh, uh, you know, almost zero. 
Okay, uh, for example, uh, uh, one of my competitors uh, uh, argued that the reason uh, we, 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 uh, the reason that uh, uh, they're not composing new work because the, the genocide, I said, that's not true. When I was there before the gen genocide, you guys didn't compose anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone uh, uh, argue you in a different take, um, saying that when, when he performs in a traditional music, he is actually composing. I said, no, you are elaborating. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are being creative, but you are elaborating. The, the, the structure of Roger Board is still the same. When I see that, uh, uh, my wife and I decided that we should do something about that, and that's why we, we create Nimita Composer uh, Institute. Uh, uh, mainly, we, um, uh, a couple of things here. Mainly, we, uh, we, we train um, the next generation of composer in both disciplines. One, uh, one is in Western type of tendency, like string quartet or, or, or whatever, uh, and, uh, and and this summer uh, we decided to, uh, to 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 sort of center on on the, the training on their own um, uh, tradition, okay, such as the court music. That's the first uh, workshop uh, for dance, and then the second one is, is the folk uh, is folk music. Yeah. Um, another thing that uh, I should say um, uh, that uh, in general we have been uh, welcoming uh, young composers from, let's say, from Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, the Philippines, uh, including, but each time there are always a few Cambodian kids. Uh, a sort of mingle with that. The reason that I want to start it simultaneously this way, uh, simultaneously this way, uh, is to introduce them uh, uh, to the region of Southeast Asia at large. Uh, uh, and and sometimes there are like three composers put it together, literally, uh, mm -hmm. because they want to to uh, to draft out a large scale form, like over 10 minutes and so forth, you know. We, we are talking about one over -on, one uh, student here. Yeah? <laughs> We're not talking about advanced, uh, advanced student at all, uh, right. you know, and, and they, they figure our way, yeah. Um, and my other question is, um, how do you um, uh, think about the relationship between the tradition and the classical music, whatever that the classical means or uh -huh. contemporary music. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, I, 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 that, that's a big uh, topic. And uh, yes, there, you can always find a relationship. Mm -hmm. You can always find, uh, and, and it, the, the question is how far uh, how far? one wants to go. Uh, how, how, how much yeah. distant from, from your parents' village to your village or your future's village. Okay, this is really, really up to them. Uh, we, we are only listener. We are only uh, trying to help them and try to guide them. Uh, we, we, we don't play the role as teachers. We don't. We, we don't believe in them. We just guide them. Uh, and so, uh, guide them uh, in, in what way? Um, uh, guide guide them, them by 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 reading their mind, by reading their manifestation sonically uh, by sensing something that come out from the earth uh, uh, and uh, something that uh, could be parallel to the tradition but of a different tone, different language uh, and, and something is pure imagination. There, there's so many things there. Uh, so the, uh, in other words, it's better not to have a set of rule, a tool to Put it on the table, okay. You had to go. You had to. Uh, I had to mingle it with with finesse, uh, with understanding, sensing, more patience, and and so forth. Yeah. And they they are really some of them are really fast. They are really fast. They can shift the same the same piece with different angle each day, each day different angle. And, and then, then we, we, we just ask the question and say, 
right now, the way you play JK and the, the conversation uh, with, with, with the boss and yourself or the young, the young man in the factory and all that, you have three to bother with. But I, 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 you know, we, we, we haven't heard much of the JK play. That one need to have a role. You know, then they come back with it. Oh, <laughs> I, think, right, I think it's really right. interesting. So you encourage more of that experimentation. Yeah, uh, to see, to see, uh, to see what what the, the, the one thing that 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 anywhere, uh, I believe that we we cannot uh, we can talk about the dose, mm -hmm. the, the what's missing, what is so much and so forth, but we cannot. Uh, uh, draw a line and said, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is this such a degree and so forth, and you should, you should exercise. Okay, I think, I think, uh, I, I think that, that, that's why I use the term uh, to guide instead of to teach. Uh, to teach is mean uh, you teaching perhaps model or you, uh, by a school of thought, or you teaching uh, your own school of thought, and I, I think, uh, to me, uh, in a way, it is uh, uh, a, a cultural suicidal. You, you don't give the freedom of the artist to, and you don't work hard enough to read their mind, read their heart, and, and, and know where they are, where they're coming from, and so forth, you see. And that, 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 that is, uh, to me, is essential in such a, in, in a way when you are dealing uh, with, with the genocide um, uh, that costs millions of lives and, and, uh, and so forth. And, and after that, they, 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 they haven't fully recovered uh, in the psychological way, you know, the, their mental state and so forth. And you have to take uh, all of these things into consideration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was so beautifully put. Especially the <laughs> cultural suicide, I'm having goosebumps just hearing that. Um, um, have you encountered um, the uh, resistance when you are guiding those? Uh, yeah, um, during some, some uh, uh, in the region up north, uh, uh, there was some resistance. Okay, uh, there were a split, a clear split uh, between a traditionalist uh, and and uh, uh, the, the explorer. Okay, and so that that's really really hard uh, for me. Uh, uh, simply, uh, it go against uh, a given uh, situation that we work together and so forth as as collaborators, and you know. But I, I was pretty patient. Uh, I, I, uh, and and I, I had to uh, uh, figure out a way uh, uh, to to bounce back by giving uh, the same exercise to everyone the next morning, and and see what they come up with. And they came up with zero, and so it means like they, they had to follow me now. <laughs> One man show. Uh, I think, uh, and he does not realize that he's already uh, uh, overlap and uh, even almost heavily like a Western composer already. Uh, he, he has no clue whatsoever, except we who had training from the West know it. And he never heard this thing at all. Now, how, how can uh, a, a, a remote performing artist uh, find the common ground with the West, without uh, the knowledge, without training, and so forth. And I think this this might be an interesting uh, 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 idea to 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 further observe. And that they just had to grab on any piece of wood when you are yes. in the river, uh, you know. And it is understandable. But this has been going for too long. And, and we, we all know, that's how I, I, I keep telling um, some of my uh, artist friends, I said that uh, you and sister compose all, all the time, create a new art form all the time. Okay, and, and uh, um, without that, you don't have a, a, a sonic interpretation of what a giving culture is all about. 
okay you, you, when you don't have that you don't have that uh, 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 a kind of uh, uh, abstract uh, type of uh, artistic manifest manifestation in a given culture then 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 the preservation will will sink at some point because how long can a culture uh, preserve a 2000 year old piece a 3000 year old piece no there is no way it's going to go down by by itself one by one that's why the the new offshoot from the 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 the, the main uh, central uh, uh, tradition, whatever it might be, uh, uh, need, need to move on, need, need to create more pieces. We need to invest in new ideas in a way that frees them from a limiting system. This is what I look at as a sustainable way of new diversity. Instead of commissioning a work or an artist, what if we invest funding resources for collective idea brewing rather than a world premiere or finished project we accept that a new idea is the result, one that will continue to adapt and evolve over time, a living, breathing idea. At the heart of this collective idea brewing, we need a training ground driven by Skillshare. It is important to bring together artists and collectives with a production team, provide production and design knowledge to regions without existing equipment and frameworks so that specific and local knowledge merges with knowledge for the production. For example, setting up workshops in the field of lighting design or workshopping applications for project funding. Critical to this skill share is the inclusion of a translator from the beginning. Ensuring information is available feeds the new idea back into the community. And let's not forget about our audience. They are just as important in the dialogue surrounding new ideas. Right now, education is separate for presenters and sometimes an afterthought. Inclusive audience education takes into account the fundamentals and offer impossible knowledge of traditions while still allowing a certain freedom to incubate new ideas in consideration of history, the human condition, and our lived reality. World music is a coined term by the West, a Eurocentric approach that implies a high and a low culture. Festivals and concerts talk little about its classical approaches, lineages, and nuance. We need more of a guided listening process, asking what are the history of the instruments? How are they used in this context? We need to acknowledge its own classical approach and its own experimentational mutations. Always family concerts and late or early night, not right time, they feel like they are being represented but becomes only a feel good experience. It's not that people don't know how to learn, it's about how to set up a conversation. It's really kind of opening up those pathways right. that's how it happens you know i don't i don't think from the individual i think it's about solidarity anyway it's great that we're chatting you Absolutely. know this is really this is really really important is how collectively we can you know shift <laughs> shift things that is that nothing changes unless you change the narrative you know the the kind of underlying story because mm -hmm. i think st stories are so powerful the story you tell creates your world right, <laughs> right. And, and allows you to see and think and imagine you know certain conditions and possibilities and so so one thing I really see because there are plenty of um, you know sort of schemes you know that 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 you know are set up to help people of color or women composers or you know whatever kind of right. so-called marginal yeah. group there might be you know part of it is actually just spending having enough time you know, because you can't know everything straight away. Right. Because people don't trust you exactly. unless you have that relationship, right? You can't just sort right. of go in there and expect to sort of know stuff and learn stuff. I mean, that's, that's a very sort of Western academic approach, right? That you go and study something, you know, and that it's there, it's there for you to study. Whereas <laughs> from inside the culture, no, it's not 
Right. Really yeah. like that. You know, you have responsibilities. Yeah. Yeah. You have responsibilities. You have to learn and how to breathe for three months before you exactly. can pick up something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I feel um, time is really crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why, you know, it's, it's, it's so tricky because there's no quick fix. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Um, and so it's, it, I think, I think what we see is that it requires like really long investment to get significant change. Um, and sorry, I, I just can't see any sort of really fast, <laughs> fast fix, but on the other hand, um, yeah, this notion of, of, um, leadership coming from within other communities is, is for me, the only sort of really healthy way to do it and investing in that, you know, actually modeling the pathways in which you, you, you're kind of building something culturally, you know, in a really deep long-term sense. Um, you know, this curatorial role for me is identifying what I see as the strength of the artist and really you know, trying to encourage that through and providing the resources, right? You know, you need someone to help you transcribe, you know, that all the stuff that the visual artists have, yeah? You know, yeah. artists can build their own stuff. Other people help, you exactly. know, build it, exactly. source materials, exactly. solve the technical problems. Mm-hmm. And I think this kind of approach is what's needed. If you want to engage artists who don't, haven't had those privileged pathways where they've already learned no, no. blah, blah, and blah. And I think that in yeah. music, this is actually what we should actually uh, uh, champion is mm. instead of saying that, uh, you know, artist director needs to do all that, right? But actually say we need to set up a, a ro- roster of mentorship mm. that can mm. address all those, you know, and, and we actually have the funding to give the mentorship, right? So it's a very, like, you know, healthy mentorship yeah. program or, or we or we maybe don't say that word as mentorship but mm. collaborator that kind of you know ideas that how or yeah. to, you need someone to be inside of that cultural dialogue and then you also need yeah. to, you know a pathway to open up that right because this is what your role yeah. is with the festivals you're engaging or yeah the performance that you're engaging yeah yeah I think that's important modeling of the pathway, you know, because if you if you've really grown up in a privileged way where you had your music lessons and you did all the theory and the, all the exam, you know, all those sort of grades that you know kids yeah. from middle class families do, um, and then after that you go to the summer camp and then from there you pick up you know mentorship. So you know all of that's that's already a pathway. So you have to model that kind of thing for people who haven't had the money. Right. It's not like the, the path. It's not like the model doesn't exist. It does exist. It's 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 the model. That's how, you know, people from privileged families get into conservatoria and, you know, progress and, and whatever. So it's, it's finding, like recognizing that and not expecting someone who doesn't have the background just to go straight in and be able to succeed that you know, that's a failure and then and then their fault. Again, it's like the person is the problem, it's their fault. So um yeah, it's just it's just kind of accepting that um yeah, that you actually have to you have to build the invisible model, you know, <laughs> that is operating to support these other people if you if you really want them in that space. You know, you can't just say, okay, here's this person who's never in orchestral work. I'm going to, I'm going to change my programming by, by commissioning them. That's not going to work. They have, they absolutely need that mentoring and the, and the modeling and the, all that support to make it happen. I think later. Yeah. Yeah. That absolutely. translator is the metaphorically translator. Yeah. 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 Right. And you need the intermediate step so that, you know, you work with a smaller group first, you know, you have the workshop kind of process. Yeah. Um, and but you know this is not again I have to say turn it around so that's not the problem that becomes the richness the richness of seeing this you know that if, if there's a person who's never been represented in that area suddenly is there 
how can their community celebrate them? You know, how do you, how do you turn that to me? That kind of teaching methodology method is the way it works in Indigenous communities. You make people feel something and then they understand instead of this intellectual route where you, where you explain something and I'm having like, have to, I'm having goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. You, you, somehow, you somehow have to integrate it and then you yeah. perform something. It's the other way around. It's like immediately gut reaction, I'm, you feel something and then it's... And you can empathy, to, you know, you can empathy. Oh, you are yes. all of a sudden, you are, could be that. Because Absolutely. when you are removed, yeah. you, you don't feel, you know, you think that it's always... But for me, that's what it is. It is this basic shift. <laughs> It's not a it's not an intellectual thing. It's like knowing from the inside. It's knowing through experience, you know, what the you know what the life is of other people and, and, and just how powerful that can be. Thinking about is, you know, how to stretch out, you know, the open up and stretch out the process and make that more available. Um, and by doing that, that invites you know, different kinds of people in. They can ha inhabit this more stretched out space. Exactly, exactly. There is Thinking about a better digital future can only be informed by our learnings from the past and made even stronger with tools of today and tomorrow. Music is a byproduct of the land, the dialect, and the landscape. If you take the landscape out, the distance, the weather, the food, it's dry, it's like a vacuum. With this in mind, we can then understand the instruments and voices as stories of human migration. Can we imagine a web resource to trace these stories and ground them, one that fully explores these practices as their heritage as well as their evolution? Because of COVID, this is a great time to rethink how users explore knowledge on the internet. How can we deepen conversations with a wider reach from Berlin to the artists in the places where these instruments and voices practices are from or have passed through? Again, to do this, we must examine how knowledges are sourced and categorized, how this determines who has access to this knowledge. Through this, we can secure the future of disappearing oral traditions and activate the current stories that facilitators let's say curators or mm -hmm. programmers or other artists should make the space for somebody for an artist to be able to transform to change mm -hmm. on the other hand i might have a different identity as a teacher or as a mentor mm -hmm. to other native students or for yourself with you know let's say let's say chinese american students who are you know trying to find their place in the world um, or my, or, you know, immigrant students is that I think they do need some handles to say, oh, this is a person who's come before me who, who mm -hmm. understood how to navigate this. Mm -hmm. In those situations, I try, I, I, I give more away or I'm more, I'm more, um, uh, I'm more open about maybe, um, where I'm coming from or who I yes. think I am. And so that's important too, because I can't, I can't be that same person to, to people who are trying to learn it. And what the project is, is uh, myself going to different reservation schools, the Navajo Reservation, where I'm from, also the Hopi Reservation, which is also in northern Arizona. And uh, previously, also, we were working with the Salt River Pima community, which is near Phoenix. And I go to a, a high school for a week and recruit some young composers, uh, maybe up to 10 at each school. And give them the, the assignment of writing a three minute piece for string quartet. And so half of these schools, they have music programs. And the reason they have music programs is usually because they have a really good football team or sports team. So they need a marching see. Right. And uh, other schools, they don't have any arts funding. They don't have any, you know, they just have very few classes. And some of these schools are very rural. Some of the students don't have electricity in their homes or running water. Um, so you have a full, you know, different uh, spectrum of, of conditions of, of where these students are coming from. And so, uh, you know, giving them the task of writing in Western notation, for me, I approach it like they're learning a, another language that they're going to have to relay onto 
uh, a group of professional musicians who only read that language or who are most versed in that language. One thing that's evolved out of this, this program is a very wide interpretation of vibrato. So I, I think that's, that's a cultural thing that has come out in, in which the students are trying to replicate the voice. So I, you know, I let them know that the string players are going to automatically add vibrato into the work, uh, but that uh, you know, a lot of times we have a student say, well, I wanted a very wide vibrato or a very slow vibrato or a very fast vibrato. So, so a lot of times we have students really use that technique to get across a certain sound that they want. Almost like, you know, like you would hear in a voice uh, or, you know, a Navajo singing or Hopi singing where you have this, ah, you know, this, this vibrato that might begin one way and end in another way. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing I can teach these students is that you know, it's a language, you can learn this language, you can understand these instruments, which are beautiful instruments. They have their own tradition, but it doesn't mean you have to write in that way, you know. And there are going to be different corners of this world that won't like what you do, but there will be very strange corners that might like what you, you know, the, the odd things you make with these tools in this language. So that's all I can really teach these, these young people. And, um, you know, what's been interesting is, you know, in the 21st century is that all these young people might have, uh, you know, apps and iPhones and things. And maybe they're not interested in uh, writing another string quartet again, but I get students who then, you know, have questions of, oh, well, I want to work in a recording studio or I want to move to the next city and, um, you know, make other kinds of music. And so that's, that's where, you know, a lot of the, the lessons end up, you know, evolving into something else, or they want to become a sculptor or, you know, a filmmaker. And so, you know, I, I'm there to also at least try to guide some of that discussion. But yeah, it's, it's, to, it's to let them know that um, on one hand, we're dealing with a very old European tradition. On the other hand, that's just one way to get into some kind of door that goes somewhere else. I think first, uh, one should research that person's work and um, it's not a big problem right now, but uh, find out, you know, of course, what tribe this person is from, where they come from. Um, seek out, seek out folks that are, you know, identifying as indigenous are recognized in their communities as being indigenous artists. And uh, you must like their work. I mean, don't collaborate with somebody and you don't really like their work. Um, but, uh, and then just uh, now we can, you know, zoom each other up, it seems like, and, and the, take the discussion further. But um, of course, they should be equal collaborations. If, if you're seeking a, a film score or something, and you need a very particular flute and drum kind of thing, yeah, sure, that's some other kind of paid gig. But if you're talking about an art collaboration, I think, I think uh, it's very, it should be a very equitable situation. And mm -hmm a very, you know, self-determined situation between those involved about what it's going to be. And, um, and you, you might find that the, the person has an idea that they would like to, um, that might need that contribution from the person who's seeking the, the collaboration that, uh, that they don't have access to. So that can be very equitable and uh, kind of, you know, reciprocal relationship of making something that would never exist in the world had that union not come together. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, there's no, there's no excuse for not really researching somebody's work right now. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier is, is that uh, not just making a concert of identity. I think there's other things to talk about than somebody's identity. There could be shared experiences. There could be mm -hmm. shared ancestral experiences. There could be, um, you know, worldview. I think there's a lot of overlap in worldview, cultural worldview or contemporary worldview. Um, and I think it d definitely requires some meetings with somebody, uh, you know, time permitting, just to see, you know, what do you think of this? What do you think? And being very open minded if, if somebody might have issue with, a, let's say, a title or something. There's, and there's a lot of tropes. I mean, nobody should be making uh, concerts that say decolonize this or, you know, that's an old, that's overused right now. So uh, decolonization, all these things without really. Uh, seeking what that might mean to to somebody, but I, I think there's a, there's a lot of these kinds of um, uh, groups that are happening. What what that might mean um, to to 
to you decolonization? I just feel like it's an overused kind of saying, you know, in exhibition titles or uh, there's been a couple concerts or conferences where it's, yes. you know, it's talking about that, but it's, it's, there's so much more to talk about. I mean, there's so much more to go deeper into than just decolonizing the institution. As Raven mentioned, dialogue with artists is key. In these same breaths, we often talk in terms of reconciliation like Tug and Yang mentioned in their article, to reconcile is to rescue a settler's future. Asking what will decolonization look like? What are the consequences? We cannot continue to reconcile and center reconciliation within our dialogues. Rather, we must acknowledge that the expected results cannot be dictated within a singular framework. Unless we are fluid in our approach, we in fact keep these colonial structures we aim to dismantle. Dictating results is patriarchal in itself. We cannot always react to a situation. We must be proactive in ideating and accommodating fluidity. And during this process, accidents are okay. They will happen on this ongoing process. Someone's accident, could just be a way of experimenting, while these accidents or unruliness could be someone else's survival skills, perhaps even their only modes of living. Those of us presenting the work of others must be nimble in a way that gives agency to artists. As such, it is imperative we invite this unknowing into process of creation. We are all aware of the cyclic process, but how do we reimagine a future always informed by the time you are given, by the evolving cultures that you are encountering and living in? We must reimagine this as a spiral with a trajectory leaving the core, yet anchored with a continuous, thorough research. We must also remember that experimentation is contextual and it is essential to think about this on a local scale. Oftentimes, when artists experiment, this is disruptive to their community's infrastructure. When you are being shunned by the old guard, and when man-made geographic borders are the limitations of your world. We must meet and listen to these people where and how they are. This is a two-way street. Only together can we reimagine models of collaboration leaning on each other's knowledge and modes of existence. Only together can we learn how to reinform and re co-inhabit in the post-COVID world. This takes time. Let's focus on the transformative years, letting go of the quantifiable results, because as we know, results always change and shift faster than we can predict. Today, you have been invited into our dialogues Let's not have this to be a project of now. Let's keep the momentum going. Off I go. So thank you very much, Duyun, for this um, most inspiring and uh, collab collaborative uh, keynote speech here of uh, our seminar, Curating Diversity. And uh, Duyun, you are with us from New York? I am. Hello. Oh my god, I see myself so big. <laughs> so uh, we have around uh, 13 minutes now for a short Q&A. If you who are following us on um, Zoom or YouTube have any questions, please uh, type them and they will get to me and we can include those questions also in the next uh, 13 minutes. But um, do you, uh, first of all, you know, when listening and watching this uh, keynote, uh, previously we have talked a lot about your uh, 
idea of future tradition. And today, I think we have heard that future tradition for you is also very, very much linked to questions of engaging, of listening, and also in your dialogue with Lisa Lim and the very deep idea of finding a new pathway. But could you maybe talk a little bit more about what does future tradition mean to you and how do we get there? Um, in many uh, 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 senses, um, I think that um, uh, we should also uh, stop talking about the future um, because the present is the future. Um, and then uh, the pathway is um, the idea of um, mediating. And I think that Shinri Ong was also talking about that too, uh, including Ray, uh, Raven. Um, that's why I engage all the artists to share those uh, worldviews and uh, practices. Well, one thing is that, you know, uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the people who have engaged for many years and who have shared their own practice within their communities. So sometimes, and even like you're from, if you're from that community, you, because the community always changing and evolving and shifting and shifting with the time and, and, and world events, so that uh, we do need that um, the linking uh, person and be that person or be that agent. And sometimes um, it can be the artist or sometimes it can be a local community pe 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 person or sometimes it needs to be a, a translator of dialects to dialects and to languages. Because I have um, been on panels um, looking at uh, proposals, for instance, and then um, and each uh, organizations have their own way of um, own idea of what proposals or what um, uh, the work of uh, music or art should look like or should feel like. Um, and unfortunately, um, those kind of knowledge is not accessible to 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 all of the people that you want to engage. So when we are really wanted to dig deeper of the idea of diversity. Uh, we do need to think first is that the the, the standard of what you think um, of that uh, the clean packaged idea of what you wanted to address and why you think and that's why I wanted to say that uh, we need a translator in between these two directions too. So it's not just uh, the artist director or the curator thinking that now today, um, this year, in the next three years, we're going to address these problems. And then we are going to find all those people to, to address that, those problems for us. And therefore, our audience will have, will, you know, be the next level of appreciation and all that. Um, I think that we, if we really care for that diversity, which means that we care for the people who are living on the land, on the diverse land, so that we need to look at, you know, not, uh, we need to address the, 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 at the core of the, the urge, why we wanted to know the other people. Thanks a lot. And I think um, this touches very much upon the question of representation, but not only representation in terms of who is on stage, but also representation of who's actually involved, how they are involved, where they are represented. And you seem to also have uh, expanded your role as an artist in the recent years, uh, on the one hand as a composer and a performer, but I also somehow sense uh, an expanding activist dimension in the way you work. Uh, how do you see this yourself? I think I'm always um, activist. Um, um, I think that you know, just increasingly, uh, if you have more platform, you're going to speak louder and more frequently, and and your voice is going to be heard more. And you wanted to uh, engage other artists to to speak with you. Um, I think that's kind of also by invitations, right? So you're not just saying that these are the things that I think should work. Um, I going back to uh, what you were trying to say about representation. Sometimes I think that representation, when you do need to think about what the representation really means, what I mean by that is that um, sometimes from other side, we th perhaps there will be people thinking that, oh, this is what they wanted us to do. So this, this idea of the presentation of that work 
or the, the, the presentation of that selection of that work could also be edited down. So, so I'm more interested in correlating these new ideas um, correlating because I'm more interested in, because inside we, they need like new ideas coming in, you know? It's never about, oh, you're introducing you to us. This is what I meant by stop talking about decolonization. Uh, it's really about um, uh, interested in this, perhaps having this mis ideas to, 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 to build, to rebuild and how to rebuild a new allyship as well. Thanks a lot. And uh, we have a question here from uh, YouTube, uh, from Yuengen Wang, who was asking, uh, I would love an elaboration on what decolonization means to you and why it may not be enough. And maybe also something about on, you know, how decolonization differs from diversification. Uh, the, the question is colonization, decolonization and diversitation, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, because the in the article of the terms that they were talking about is that it addresses the settlers future. It does not address um, the people from within as much. So when you're talking about decolonizing, and when you're saying that decolonizing to the whole idea of um, the music and it, you're positioning um, this Western or Anglo-American uh, classical music practices as the superior status, which to many people, uh, they don't agree, which to many people, um, they will, will, will argue, your classical music is not my classical music. So, and, and it, when we are talking, you know, when we are uh, in those rooms and talking about um, the Contemporary Music Festival, we, or we talk a lot about the experimentation, what that means in experimentation. Um, I think that we really need to uh, address whose contemporary life are we talking about? Uh, what kind of music and whose contemporary mu music are we, are we addressing? And when we're listening to music, you know, we often say, oh, this is the world music and that's not experimentation enough. But we neglect, sometimes we do neglect that we don't have that uh, the same set of uh, training system to, to understand the nuances of that could be that experimentation. So we need that kind of also mediation um, coming in as well. And uh, we have one more question here online, and then I'd also like to ask uh, if there are any questions in the live audience. So after the next question, which comes from online, if you have any questions where you are in Berlin, uh, you can uh, go to the microphone on stage. Um, but first, uh, from Peter Meanwell, he's asking uh, if we can convince funders and organizations to give priority to this idea of pathway and process, process and mentorship rather than giving priority to the idea of commissions or premiers. Can you then reflect on how we as a collective could shift the audience's expectations, not to be focusing on you know, the genius and the canon and the novelty of the music, but uh, more to something else, how we can work with this in relation to the audiences? Absolutely. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot too, and those conversation discussion are com uh, very much at core of uh, today's discussion, you know, uh, in, the, in this uh, cultural societal um, uh, time. Um, first of all, let's just say the people who run the foundations and organizations are the same people as you and me. So we are just addressing those social issues. When we are having uh, those social movements, all the people are stand up and rise to the occasion and want to have a discussion and want to relook at the framework and want to reshift that radical shift. So I actually believe and I really think that if we look, step away and have that inviting those people come in too and have that same round table, so let's look at the, the uh, reconstruct this what that process mean, you know, what that workshop really holds. Is that workshop can be the preview of something? Is, is, is that preview can be that work? 
So, so for me, the, the because when you think about it, like all uh, you know, historically in many um, practices, music has always been a, a, a test ground for how the community really works, how the community really relate to each other, and I think that we can go back to that kind of you know, Autumn was saying like the spiritual way of connecting. And, and really address that but this is how we connecting to each other, especially now that COVID has taught us, taught us is that we really need each other. Uh, that kind of loneliness is, is a privilege to have, right? So, um, so I, I think that we need, we need a little bit of um, uh, thinking together and thinking about how we can deconstruct um, the world premiere and the, the 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 ending result. I think that's the ending result that I'm trying to 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 deshatter, trying to shatter a little bit here. Because if you were to ask any composers, if you were to ask any performers, no one would tell you that the the, the world premiere is actually the only the beginning of the life of that work. So as organizations, as our festivals, we need to also reflect that as well. That's a lot. And uh, the time is running here, but uh, there should be time for a question from uh, the live audience in Berlin. Any questions from Berlin? Is this the mic? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd like to ask a question on behalf of um, the organization uh, Gender Relations in New Music. The question is, um, is classical music Europe's folk music or its traditional music? And if yes, why isn't the Berlin Philharmonic and uh, Opera Foundation here? Uh, is this kind of cultural essentialism really what we want to stand for in Europe? And also, uh, does focusing on these, mo these moments of meeting, quote unquote, of cultures not turn them into monoliths? Thank you. Unfortunately, I can't really hear well. I can, um, repeat, I can repeat the question if you like, or I can put it in the chat. Yeah, could you put it in the chat so I can read? It should be on the chat on the YouTube too, if you need. I'm not um, from Monica. Um, so, so, um, do you and I can do? I have the question here. Uh, is it just chat. a connection issue? I can talk slower. Oh, you have the it's the QA. Is that what I'm looking at? Ah, yeah. So, the question is Is classical music Europe's folk music or its <laughs> traditional music? And if yes, um, I'm wondering why there's not the Berlin Philharmonic here and the Opera Foundation. Uh, and if this is a kind of cultural essentialism uh, that we really want to stand for uh, in Europe. And also, does focusing on these moments of meeting of cultures not turn them into monoliths, into essential sort of holes that can't be mixed or don't already exist in a moment of mixture? First of all, uh, in many regions, uh, uh, there are differences between folk music and uh, classical music. Um, there that's why are, I'm asking uh, about Europe specifically, or Germany specifically. I don't, uh, I don't uh, think classical music is Europe's folk music. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, this is also how my training is. I don't think uh, what I have learned uh, is Europe's folk music because I have also learned uh, Europe's folk music. It's a, a very different uh, practices. Um, and uh, the reason I bring up uh, to all these topics is that, uh, is, uh, is that I, my understanding is uh, we're talking about diversity. And we're talking about decolonizing of that uh, uh, contemporary music. And so I'm trying to uh, link into my understanding of, or my perspective of, of um, the contemporary life that, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, more than just the Germany. Um, I do not know why isn't Berlin Philharmonic and uh, Berlin Opera Foundation isn't here. But I think that with a uh, 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 next round, maybe when we are talking more enough of those um, topics, maybe they do want to be uh, in, uh, uh, on this kind of panels, especially when they, uh, when when the orchestras now 
uh, really are trying to find their inventive way to to re-engage their audience, especially during COVID time. Um, is this kind of cultural essentialism really what we want to stand for Europe? I do re don't really uh, 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 understand what is cultural essentialism means. So I think, uh, thank you very much. Um, the time is running here, so I think we should uh, stop here as we need to go okay. uh, go on. Um, but thank you very much, Stuyun, for this um, e-note, multifaceted curation, and also for a very interesting conversation in this Q&A session. And thanks for being with New York. Yeah. And now we will have a 15 minute break for the live audience in Berlin. It's a coffee break and for our online participants, you can also now listen to music online presented by the artist Cedric. And at one o'clock, we will continue with our first panel with the title, The Emancipation of Curation. And uh, thanks for being with us and uh, see you soon.